From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of e e evenings, LA Late, with incredible great news about your fourth stimulus check update of 2022. Direct from Santa Monica, California, tonight for May 6, 2022. In tonight's one hour special broadcast from the shores of Santa Monica, California, we'll go over the breaking details after a tumultuous week on Wall Street is over, but a force from a check has landed in every U.S. state. We'll go over the incredible news tonight as viewers this week got their applications in from this channel for those force from checks, and I'm going to check back with you tonight if you did the same. A force from check has now landed in every U.S. state, and I'll have the latest details for you over this one hour broadcast. If you've not become a member, you want to become a member because this is where we have all the incredible details. The membership newsletter coming out Monday through Friday has those four stimulus checks in there, how to get those applications on file. And if you just found this channel, welcome. Over this next one hour broadcast, we'll go over these four stimulus checks that are law, that are in every state that viewers have gotten, and that your homework assignment overnight was to get an application in on file. Next tonight, I'll get you ready to get your second application on file. Bear market, but it was. Wall Street suffered its worst weeks that we have seen in a very long time. The Dow Jones ended this week, the sixth consecutive week down. The NASDAQ ended another week down, the first time down for five consecutive weeks since 2012. What does this mean for Build Back Better Act? It's all good news because what's at issue tonight? is that the U.S. economy is stalling. The economic data continues to get worse. The corporate earnings continue to get worse. And this is all good news for your Build Back Better Act that would give you additional checks, fifteen dollars to $80,000 of additional checks. It's good news for your SS300 that would swap your benefits from COLA to inflation. And it's also potentially good news for six stimulus, which will be touching back in tonight across the board. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, we're going to go over the incredible checks proposed and the incredible checks that have landed by direct deposit. And tonight, you're going to apply for another check with me on this recording. A forcible check in every U.S. state. You're ready for the details. I'm ready to deliver you the news. It's America's most watched host for financial news in prime time. It's evenings, and it starts right now. Everybody. It's a beautiful night from the shores of Santa Monica, California, and the West Coast. Welcome and happy Mother's Day for all my mothers who will be tuning in over the weekend. I'll be back with you all weekend long with new shows. The details tonight is that a force stimulus check has now landed in every U.S. state, and I'm going to go over that force stimulus check for you in this recording. If you knew this channel, welcome. If you just found this channel, welcome. Get your membership signed up. You want to get that incredible newsletter, which comes out Monday through Friday, and it features those force stimulus checks in there get that membership newsletter out and in this recording we're going to go over those incredible checks i'm going to show you how to get a check how to get your application on file over this one hour broadcast stay to the very end because we have more checks later in this video and we have a lot of breaking news at the end of the video over this one hour broadcast we got a lot to go over and a lot of major developing details that just happened in the last hour since afternoon's LA. Tonight, folks, America is grippling with a crumbling economy, and the U.S. economy is stalling up. A bad economy means more stimulus for you. The way it works is very simple. Congress always gives you stimulus when there is a bad economy. And when we looked at the situation of the U.S. economy back in April, we may not have been so sure. Tonight, people really are sure that a bad horizon is coming. Why? The Dow Jones ends a tumultuous week. In fact, it's not the only week that's been bad. It's down for the sixth consecutive week. The Nasdaq down for another week. The longest-running trend of down weeks for the Nasdaq since 2012. Housing starts down four months consecutive in a row. The auto sales dramatically down. In fact, now, tonight, we learned that 
Use auto sales are down even more. If you can't trust a used car salesman, who can you trust? <laughs> well, tonight, folks, that is all good for your Build Back Better Act. What is Build Back Better Act? The Build Back Better Act is the four stimulus package that's currently sitting in the Congress that would give you, pause, additional, let's say it again, additional four stimulus checks to those four stimulus checks that are already in your states. Four stimulus checks are currently in every U.S. state across the board, and in this recording, later in this recording, I'm going to show you how to get those four stimulus checks that are in your state tonight. But the Build Back Better Act proposes to give you additional checks to those checks as well. There is three classes and three add-ons of checks, and let's take a look at them. Those credible classes of checks include $25,000 for the purchase of your first home, $250 billion for free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities, a possible MSE check, then lots of money for seniors, lots of free internet, then farmers checks, independent contractors checks. That's cluster number three. Back into cluster number two, paid leave. Back into cluster number one, hazard pay, $4,000 of elder care, $4,000 of care for young children, the CTC. That is all the Build Back Better Act. But remember, as I said it before, that is currently in the Congress. You don't have to wait for that because right tonight, a forced stimulus check is already in every U.S. state. A forced stimulus check is already in every U.S. state. What Build Back Better Act proposes to do is give you extra checks on top of these that I'm going to show you how to get tonight. Viewers last night and the day before got their applications in on file, and it's good. And if you just join this channel, I'm going to show you how to do it in this recording, because tonight we're going to go get another check. Tonight we end a very, very difficult economic week, and we have a lot more economic data that came in minutes ago. Let's go over the details across the board. When you look at the economic data, the corporate earnings, the Wall Street, the housing market, the auto sales, all these numbers, gas and wheat, they're all bad. The only number that came in good this week, of course, was the labor numbers. Labor numbers were good, but not as good as many people thought. What is latest data? Well, the S&P shred, shredded 1.2% today, NASDAQ down another 2%, and the Dow was down 345 points or 1% just today just today, but the widely anticipated rally in equities and bonds did not happen. Did not happen. Le that's what Barclays strategist Emmanuel Cow said. You know, it was a week that we did not really see this coming. We started the week with our indication from Jay Powell, he's going to do a half basis point increase at the May FOMC meeting on Wednesday. We knew this. He told us, uh, us a month ago. Everyone on Wall Street knew it. I knew it. You knew it. So what did he do? He did a half basis point. What's the big deal? He did exactly what he told us that he was going to do. And then the ground below us opened up and we caved in. Why? The reason why the economy is tanking is because nothing is working. And then what Jay Powell's talking is just talk. Now people are trying to really catch up and realize it is just talk. If you're with this channel last year, I told you the importance of doing things on the cob. And it starts with SS300. Joe Biden had promised to swap your COLA for inflation. And doing that would raise your benefits if the inflation is high. Last year, Jay Powell said inflation was coming in at 1% to 2% in December. And then be transitory, come back down. I said, no, it's not, Jay. It's going to be 8% in December. And it's going to stay prolonged and high. He got it very wrong. I got it very right. And I got to tell you, at the time, no one was saying the numbers I said that high, with the exception of Jeremy Siegel at Warden School of Business. He's actually a little bit higher than me. Where does that put your benefits? Well, if Joe Biden makes that swap from COVID to inflation, when your benefits are seen in 8% inflation, you get $200 more per month. Not just that month, not just that year, but a lifetime. Because once your benefits go up, they never go down. So what if it happened today? Yes, all that Joe Biden has to do is do what he promised in his presidential platform at JoeBiden.com to swap that COLA for inflation. He picks up the phone. He calls the Social Security Administration said, head and says, swap COLA for inflation. And there you go. $200 literally 30 days out on top of your existing benefits. Then if inflation tracks at 4% in December, then you get another $100 poor per month because that's about another $100. That's SS300. $300 more per month, not just this year but lifetime. So then where 
is inflation. Are we still good? Why hasn't Joe made that phone call? First, Joe needs to make the phone call. There's no excuses with this. Why? He made the phone call with uh, Department of Agriculture in October of last year, telling them to raise your snap. He's made the phone call to Department of Labor saying, and Department of Education saying, let's do some more student loan debt forgiveness. This one's easy. All he does is pick up the phone and contacts the Social Security Administrator ahead and says, swap that COLA for inflation. And that would give you $300 more per month. More about that in a second. Now, four stimulus checks are in every U.S. state, but Build Back Better Act would give you additional checks. What is the status tonight of Build Back Better Act? Let me tell you where it is. The president's inside team says that he has lined this up to get it done quickly. I believe that the negotiations will be finished by the end of this month. We are told by Andrew, by Andrew Bates, the president's spokesperson, that the negotiations between Sinema, Joe, and Joe are currently back on, and you need those. Why? Joe needs it because if he wants to get you a check before the midterm elections of Bowdoin, he needs to get that check out to you by about July. Why? Because you vote about three months ahead of time by mail, not just in November. And if that check is going to land by July, then you need that negotiated deal in May. That is why the negotiations are heating up so quickly. Now, would the Build a Back Better Act get passed with bipartisan support? Tonight, we have a new wrinkle. This is breaking news tonight, folks, and it may sound like the opposite of what I reported last night. But this is why data changes so quickly and why your money is so dependent upon the economic developing details. Tonight, the economic developing details is not just the economy, but also the American electorate's opinions about the economy. A new CNN poll by, of course, the liberal cable channel asked Americans what's their approval rating of Joe Biden today, and they got nearly a 70% disapproval rating. You are not mishearing me right from CNN asking both Republicans and Democrats what is their approval rating of the president, less than about 30%. That was not good. Let's go to the next number they asked. They asked, what is the most important part of the most important issue at hand? Was it abortion? Was it Russia? No, it was the economy. That was an easy question. The next question was, do you blame Joe Biden for the current state of the economy? No blame or neutral, or did he cause the economy to be worse? Nearly 60% of people polled said Joe Biden made the economy worse. Okay, so this is bad. They're blaming him, and they're also saying he caused it. So what does he have to do? He has to pass Build Back Better Act, because what's at issue is that Americans now perceive him for causing their financial problems, and they need to see him doing it something to fix their financial problems. Why is this different tonight? It's because of what I said last night about bipartisan support. I said that if bipartisan support is needed for Build Back Better Act, because I said if the Democrats pass it and the Republicans don't vote in favor of it, then the Republicans are in big trouble in the midterm elections. And then I said, I believe the Republicans don't want to risk the midterm elections. They would likely vote in a modified version of Build Back Better Act because if it gets passed without a Republican vote, then the Democrats will say, hey, we fix the situation. Again, Republicans didn't help you. Tonight, I have a different opinion about that. That my opinion tonight is that with poll numbers so bad as they are tonight, Republicans may just roll the dice and say, you know, the numbers are so bad. The disapproval numbers are so bad. The blaming on the president is so bad that maybe we just don't do anything going into the midterm elections. We blame we blame and we don't give any money and we just blame and hopefully people just vote for us you don't want that of course you want bipartisan support for build back better act but i think as the poll numbers get worse then that may turn it into a real pure democratic only bill and it may fail it may fail because that becomes a more risky proposition What's important to understand is that I believe Build Back Better Act will pass, but the president needs to be refocused on the agenda. And what's the data tonight? The data tonight is that the 10-year Treasury note is among the other data's worse. 10-year Treasury note surged to 3.13% tonight. 
Last night on Ease LA for Cinco de Mayo is at 3%. Tonight's at 313. Folks, you can't do these numbers. These are horrible numbers. They're not sustainable. When we talk about the mortgage rates, they're surging to 5%. No one's going to be able to do these numbers. What does this mean? Credit card debt going to be more expensive. Car loans going to be more expensive. Anything that's a revolving debt thing, like a revolving credit line, more expensive. And then comes the corporate earnings. Earnings of Under Armour. Under Armour plummeted down 22% and is a miss on top and bottom line numbers tonight. In fact, it even hurt uh, its competitor Nike, whose shares were down 4%. Nike didn't even report, but it was hurt by Under Armour down nearly 20%. Under Armour is literally like a a, 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 a very almost heading to a a a, a, a does a less than $20 co uh, stock and it's going to sustain there. Meantime, we look at the jobs numbers today. The April jobs numbers were released and it showed a gain of 428 thousand jobs that was a good number more than the 400,000 expected but look at this number it shows that the labor participation rate it means how many people are actually participating was still down it's 1.2 percent points below its pre-pandemic level I mean there's jobs out there and people are not working they're staying at home there's also the long-term unemployment number it's still 1 million I believe less than pre-pandemic levels Credit data showed an increase of 52.4 billion as well. Then, when we look at the labor numbers released a minute ago, I told you a lot that came in just tonight. It showed a modest reduction, but it also showed the 3.8 percent increase on pay. Bottom line: less people still getting back to work, more jobs being created. Created, the salaries are going up, but people aren't taking the jobs. And this is all bad economic data. It's good news for Build Back Better Act. Because the economic data signals that you need money to jumpstart this economy. Let me respond to something that I've seen somewhere else. And let me explain the issue. If you pass stimulus, does it, does it cause inflation? It does not. Stimulus does not cause inflation. It just increases the national debt. Joe Kernan this morning keeps on asking the same darn question on morning news. What about student loan debt forgiveness? Does that hurt inflation? It does not. Spending by the federal government does not cause inflation. In fact, if more people have more money in their wallet, it actually solves sort of part of the concerns about GDP. The GDP, the gross national product of the United States government, is continuing to fall. That's bad news because the lower it falls, the more you head into recession. It was supposed to be 7.1% in April. Then it came in 6.9%. Now it's shrinking dramatically. I am projecting it's going to be at zero by the end of the year because recession is starting next year. Recession means a negative GDP number. Deutsche Bank saying the same thing. And several banks now saying a 35% chance of recession starting next year. Student loan debt forgiveness doesn't cause it. Student loan uh, stimulus doesn't cause any of these things. It actually helps the GDP number. Because if Americans have more money to spend, then they spend more money, growth of the economy picks up once again. And that's actually why stimulus may get the support of the bad economic data. Let's go back to that SS300 because this gets interesting. So Jay Powell, he did exactly what he said he was going to do, half basis point. Why did Wall Street implode? Why did Wall Street go into a sixth consecutive week? We see companies reporting numbers we have not seen, in some cases, since 2014. We're not talking about pre-pandemic levels. We're talking about far before pre-pandemic levels. We see earnings guidance, like Apple, talking out three quarters, two quarters from now, third quarter, saying, you know what? Get ready for projections to not be good. We have problems with supply chain disruption out of China. We cannot get our component parts into the iPhone. We can't get those parts into the iPhone. This is Apple talking. They're saying, get ready for third quarter numbers to be weak. This is after Amazon tank tanked this week. Apple down dramatically. A lot of tech companies down with those projections. This is bad economic data. So what is Jay Powell doing? He's hitting it with a hammer. And he's going to get it wrong. The Federal Reserve traditionally has gotten the play between interest rates and inflation wrong time after time throughout history. And my projection, again, is it's going to do it wrong. Jay Powell gave you a half basis point increase at this week at the May FMC meeting, as uh, he had told you the month before. How does he work? The way the Federal Reserve works is they want to have calm. They, want, they do not want to shock the markets. They do not want to cause economic instability. They do not want to cause volatility what did they cause this week all of that and a sack of fries 
they caused all of that this week, even though they did exactly what they said they were going to do. Could Jay Powell have done this week better? He could have. He could have given us guidance about what he's doing out for the next two FOMC meetings. He really should have just said, you know, we're doing a half basis point, then another half, and then we're going to quarter. He got that quote from Steve Leisman, who thought that himself that he had a great question. It was, in my opinion, not a good question. The question by Steve Leisman to Jay Powell should have been, are you going to quarter basis point and when? That was the question that should have been asked. Rather, Leesman asked the question, are you doing three quarters? No, I'm not, Steve, obviously. So the question was remaining unanswered. When is Jay Powell going back to quarter basis point? I believe that he's going to do two more halves, and then after that I can't even project out. But I'm projecting what's going to happen. He's not going to get inflation down. And more people are co-subscribing that as well. Jay Powell, I think, made himself not look good last year. When he said that inflation was going to be 1% to 2%, transitory, temporary, I said it was going to be 8% in December. He said, no, it's not going to be that high. And it was going to be one or two months. It was so wrong then, it's still wrong tonight. Then, j Powell got it wrong again about the month of February, I believe it is, when he said that I'm getting down inflation of 1.9% by the end of this year. Again, why are you just talking things that are not happening? Third, People are educated. People know how things work. And j Paul keeps on saying that he's going to get down inflation by raising interest rates. And he says, I know what's happened in China. Well, if you know what's happened in China, you know you can't get down inflation because of what's going on in China. China tonight is causing major supply chain disruption. We, as a country, make a lot of our products in China. And then we put them into our parts and then sell them here, like the phone, iPhones. Other parts, we buy in China and ship back to us. Now the supply chain disruption. Under Arbor today, doing the same type of announcement that Apple had. Except it said it sees this as a major distribution problem. Not that the factories are closed, which is one of the problems from COVID. The second problem is you can't ship the products. And it says on Armour, it's going to have major corporate earnings problems because it cannot ship the products. Why? Because of China. There's a lockdown going on because of COVID, a sub-variant. And what is Jay Powell doing? Raising interest rates. Jay, you and I know, and everyone watching you knows, that you have nothing in your toolbox to get down inflation if it's caused by a factory in China, if it's caused by a shipper out of the port of China. You have nothing at the, at the Federal Reserve that can fix that. And why are you raising interest rates to just hammer it hard? Hard landing, very hard landing. So what is he going to do? Jay Powell is going to bring you a recession. He's going to bring you a recession. He's going to have higher interest rates. He's going to give you higher mortgage rates. He's going to give you a higher 10-year treasury note. He's going to give you higher credit card debt payments, higher loan payments, higher payments, higher payments. And what is he going to get out of that? He ain't going to get you 1.9% inflation. He ain't going to get inflation down much at all. And it's not going to work. And then you'll be in recession. And this has happened before with the Federal Reserve. It keeps on doing this talk that no one buys at this time around and no one's really buying it. And Joe Biden, he's going to suffer from it. You have to feel a little bit sorry for Joe Biden tonight because this is a guy that's probably not going to get reelected if j Powell keeps on getting things wrong. j Powell is dealing with inflation, not Joe Biden. j Powell is raising interest rates, not Joe Biden. But Joe Biden is the guy that will be out of office if inflation stays and we go in a recession because of j Powell. j Powell is going to be the guy that's going to potentially bring this economy into recession, and Joe Biden is going to be the guy that's going to be blamed for it. And ironically, that was Joe Biden's pick for renomination. j Powell was not originally appointed to the office by Joe Biden. He was renominated by Joe Biden. And there you go. That is a situation across the board. Now, the good news for you is that twofold. If Joe makes that swap from code to inflation to die, which, Lord, that is so simple. That is so simple. That is his fault. If he does not make that phone call to Social Security Administrator Head, that's his job, not Jay Powell's job. Then he's the guy to blame for that one, that SS300. If the inflation rate does stay as hot as I say it's going to stay, you get that SS300. All that Joe has to do is make that phone call, and you're done. Then, if these datas continue to come on bad day after day, week after week,
as we go into another week with potentially another bad earnings calls from corporations, bad bear market indications, bad uh, stock performances, bad data tonight about auto sales, use auto sales dramatically down again, as I projected, then that's all good for Build Back Better Act. But you know how I and you work. We don't wait around for anything. We cash checks. We don't track checks. And tonight, we're going to go over those four stimulus checks that are in every U.S. state. I am so, so proud of the viewers of this channel. You know, sometimes you make me proud, but this week, you made me really proud. We started this week with L.A. 101. In L.A. 101, the first class, I taught for you is to repeat back to me an expression. All you had to do is repeat the expression back out loud in your in your room when you're watching the video or post in the live chat while you're watching the live chat, the one sentence. To pass LA 101, you have to just repeat one sentence. And what is that one sentence? This one. There's a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state now. A forced stimulus check is in every U.S. state now. That's all you got to say. Say it right now. Write it in the live chat if you're watching this video right now live. A forced stimulus check now is in every state. Write it right now, and you are ready to pass L8-101. If you just found this channel, I'm going to recap L8-202 before we go into L8-303 and L8-404 tonight. In L8-202, we went over what are the checks. What are the checks that are in every U.S. state tonight? What are those forced stimulus checks that are in every U.S. state tonight? If you're in the live chat, write the forced stimulus checks those letters that are in every U.S. state tonight, I'll give you a hint. There's three letters. Write it right now, and I'll be back with you after the commercial break. Then I'll be ready to graduate some of you from LA 303. Because last night I gave you the assignment. I said I want you to apply for a forced stimulus check overnight, and I'm going to check back with you on May 6th and see, did you apply for a forced stimulus check overnight? I'll see who did, and you're going to get it graduated from LA 303. Then we're going to go into LA 404 tonight as I show you how to apply for your second check and get ready for that. First, I want you to get your newsletter out in front of you. If you're a member, get that newsletter out in front of you. If you're not a member yet, then go into the top of the chat or the description of this video and become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. Become a member right now. Then get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that features the three checks that are live in every U.S. state. If you're in the live chat, write those three checks. What are the three letters? I'll be back with you in just 60 seconds. With a big night, a lot of major developing details in a tumultuous week. But it's far from over, and stay the very end because we have big, exciting news and more checks later in this video. Stay the very end. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds. As America's most watched show for financial news goes into its second half, but first, here's a little bit about the community page. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. 
Nick, Nick Simon continues right now as we go into the big second half of Evening's LA, America's most watched show for financial news in prime time for May 6, 2022. I hope you had a beautiful Cinco de Mayo and get ready for Mother's Day. It's this Sunday and I'll be with you all weekend long, ready to wish you and your scarf lover a mother of a weekend. Let's go into the big details of the big second half. But first, if you haven't become a member, be hit that membership link. Remember, a forcemos check now is in every U.S. state. I want you to get that forcemos check. If you've not become a member, the link's at the top of the chat and the pinned comment. Become a member, get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system. All right, let's go over the big details tonight as we go over where we are on these four stimulus checks. In this week, we had LA 101, LA 202, LA 303, and tonight I'm ready to graduate some of you. If you just found this channel in the last five minutes, then welcome. I'm going to recap everything, and you can graduate today as well, almost. So let's go over the great details. First, in LA, in LA late 101, I had viewers just repeat one sentence to graduate from that class. A four stimulus check is in every U.S. state. A fourth stimulus check is in every U.S. state. All you have to do is write that in the, in the live chat right now. Or if you're at home, say it out loud and you're ready to graduate from L.A. 101. You're done. Now let's go to the next class, L.A. 202. In L.A. 202, I asked viewers to remember what four stimulus checks are in every U.S. state. There are three of them. What are the fourth stimulus checks in an FUS state? And I asked the question before the commercial break. Did you get it right? I saw you did. Those four stimulus checks in an FUS state are check A, check B, and check C. Congratulations to those people who remembered that by memorization and have now passed LA-202. In LA-303, we took it up a notch. In LA-303, I gave you a homework assignment overnight. I said, now in LA 303, I want you, within 24 hours, apply by tonight, by the time of today's May 6, 2022 recording, for one of those three checks. I want you to apply. Don't need you to get the money. Just apply for either check A, check B, or check C in your state. You choose a check. It's up to you. But you got to do it in 24 hours. If you just found this channel, then I'm going to give you a clearance to do it by this coming Monday, because it's a weekend. So let's go over the details. If you followed your homework assignment and did it and are ready to get graduated, then get in that live chat because I'm about to ask you to type what you did. All right, first, let's go to check A. If you applied for check A overnight as your homework assignment and you applied, right in the live chat, you did check A, and I'm going to tag you and say, you have graduated LA-303. How do you apply for check A? To apply for check A, let's first remember what it is. It's a $6,500 check. In some states, it pays up to $12,000. It's a four stimulus check. It is the same income qualification as a third. Single individual, $75,000 or less, you can get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, you can get it. If you're on benefits, you can get it, like SSI, SSDI, and veterans benefits. It's called the Homeowner's Grant Check. How do you apply for Check A? So simple. It's basically three pushes of your butt finger. Push number one, become a member. Then open that incredible newsletter and go down to Check A. Push number two, click the link when you get to click Check A that sends you into the online website for the nationwide application. Push the button again and choose your state like Mississippi and select the homeowner's grant and put your name and address and phone number in whatever they ask for. Press enter and you're done. That's it. Go into that membership newsletter, go down to check A, submit, and you are done. How simple is that? If you apply for check A overnight, right in the live chat, you did check A, and I will graduate you from LA-303. Let's go to check B. Who did check B overnight? Jump in the live chat if you did check B, and write check B if that was you. How do you apply for check B? It's a fifteen dollars to $80,000 check. Average view of the channel is getting $66,000 to $80,000. 
The money is huge. The income out qualification is the same as a third stimulus check. Single individual, $75,000 or less, you can get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, you can get it. And if you're on benefits like SSI, veterans benefits, you can get it as well. It's a homeowner's grant check. How do you get this one? About three pushes of your finger again. Push number one, become a member. Go right into that newsletter and go down to check B. Then when you find check B, what do you do? You click the link to go into the online nationwide website. Then the third push of the button, your finger, is for your state. You're going to land on a map that looks something like this on the nationwide website. You push your states. You click on your state, let's say, North Carolina. And then you go right in and type in your name and phone number, and you are done. And you got your application in on Check B. If you apply for Check B overnight, write in the live chat, and I'm ready to graduate you. Look how easy this is, folks. You go into the membership newsletter. I give you the link. You push the link. Then you go to your the map of the national wide website. You push it again. And then you get to your state. You type your name in, and you push enter. And you're done. How easy is that? So simple. Now, let's go into the check C. Check C does not involve the finger the same way. In fact, it involves maybe four fingers or five. <laughs> it involves holding the phone and calling up. Now, check C is so simple. With check C, you're not going to a online website. No, you're using the telephone to call places for check C. If you applied for Check C overnight, then write it in the live chat that you applied for at least one of Check C's overnight. What is Check C? So Check C is about a $2,000 over 12 months for stimulus check. It's actually third stimulus money, but I call it four stimulus for purposes of clarity on this channel. It's $2,000 approximately, and some viewers are getting over $150,000 of it. It's rent, utilities, mortgage assistance as well. What do you do? Well... You go into that membership newsletter again. How easy is this, folks? You go into that membership newsletter. Then you go down in that membership newsletter to check C. When you get down to check C, you see check C, and it tells you who to call, what to say, and what to do. I mean, how simple is that? Let's say that again. You open the membership newsletter, you go down to check C, and then it says, call this place. Okay, calling. <clears throat> Then it says, call this other place. Okay, call them the other place. In fact, it tells you to call about 15 places. Call them all. Then it tells you what to say in the membership newsletter. Say, rent assistance because of COVID. Utility assistance because of COVID. And there you go. How simple is that? I tell you where to call, what to say. The only thing left for you to do is just dial the number. <laughs> I'm not going to dial the number for you. I'm not going to hold the phone for you either. Uh, I have to have free hands. <laughs> so there you go. If you apply for Check C overnight, then post in the live chat. I'm ready to graduate you as well. Congratulations to every viewer of this channel who this week, ending for May 6, 2022, have graduated from LA 101, LA 202, and LA 303. You graduate from LA 101 because you said a forced stimulus check is in every U.S. state. You graduate from LA 202 because you remembered which checks are in every U.S. state. They are check A, check B, and check C. You graduate from LA 303 because you got one application on file for at least one of those three checks, either for check C or check B or check A. All right, time for extra credit. And I got two extra credits for you tonight. Is check D a force must check in every U.S. state? Is check D a force must check in every U.S. state? Yes or no? Post in the live chat right now. You got it right. Correct. Check D is not a force must check in every U.S. state. It's currently in about 24 U.S. states. Will check B be in more states in the weeks to come? According to my projections or predictions, post in the live chat yes or no. You got that right as well. Check D is currently in about 24 states, but I'm projecting it to go about 40 states. It's currently paying about $2,000 a month. It's different than check A, B, and C, which requires you to do something. Check D doesn't often require you to something, do something, but check D, of course, is also in the membership newsletter. All right, tonight, you're ready to go to 
class for L8404. I'm so ready for you. Now, some of you have already done L8404 because I've seen your comments. So congratulations to those of you who didn't wait, just zoomed right ahead. Some of you have taken the class and you've already got some of the money. So what are we doing tonight? In LA 404, I'm having you apply for your second applications. I want you to apply for your second for stimulus check. So let's go over the choices. You applied for check A, maybe you want to do check B. If you apply for check B, maybe you want to now apply for check A. If you applied, let's say, for A, maybe you want to do check C. Now let's do our check C people. If last night you picked up the phone and applied for gas assistance, Maybe tonight you're going to pick up the phone and call and ask for you t uh, for water assistance. If yesterday you picked up the phone and asked for rent assistance from your county, maybe today you're going to pick up the phone and contact one of the nonprofits and ask for rent assistance from them. Yes, you can ask for the same assistance for the same item from different places. So you can ask from a county and also ask from a state. You can ask from a county and also ask from a nonprofit. And you can do that for all those different items. So your assignment tonight, and I'm going to give you to Monday. So I'm going to give you the whole weekend. By Monday's evening to LA at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I want you to apply for your second check. I want you to apply for your second check. If you're new to this channel, you just found this channel today or over the weekend, then I'm going to give you extra time and extra day to apply. Why am I making these deadlines so tight? Because these checks are not going to be around forever. It's first come, first serve. And it's very important that you get that first application on file. And as we do it as a community, which we've done this week, and I'm just so ecstatic how well you've done it, then it feels like a group effort. You doesn't feel like you're alone. Doesn't feel like you're the only person doing it. You're doing it as a group. We're doing it as a family. You're watching. You're doing it while someone else is doing it. And maybe you do check A, and then you look to someone that says, oh, they did check C. And you're like, you know, maybe I'll do check C. Or maybe you did check B, and someone else did check A. You know, maybe I'll go do it. It makes it feel like a community, and you've done so well this week. I'm so deeply proud of you. Now, let's go back to the other developing details across the front, which is first student loan debt forgiveness. The president has forgiven student loan debts for individuals who became disabled after graduation. People went to work in the nonprofit or public sector after graduation. And then has taken the student loan debts and moved them from default status to active status. He then said if your debts were due in May, he's going to roll it over to September. Finally, he said if your debts were procured because of fraud by the university against you, he's going to forgive them completely. Where is the latest tonight on that student loan debt forgiveness? The president indicates that he will forgive more student loan debt possibly, but it will not be 50000 he has rolled that number out. Many insiders like myself believe he'll do $10,000. And that number and that determination will come in potentially in the next few weeks. I've given you a lot of guidance on other things for that student loan debt forgiveness. Tonight, I want to go over them once again. I've had a lot of success stories like Chef John Meyer and other viewers who have gotten five to $10,000 of debt forgiven so far. But Joe may also, Joe Biden may forgive an additional $10,000. Here are some things I want you to do if you are a student borrower to learn about how to get your student loan debt forgiveness. First, go to the Department of Education's website. Next, look under the press releases from the last two months and read them all. I want you to see what Miguel Cardona is saying because he explains it better than I do. Next, I want you to write down these following words. IDR credit, that's Igloo Donald R, IDR credit, then public service loan forgiveness, then also income-based repayment. That's public service loan forgiveness and also income-based forgiveness programs. So what's going on? What they're doing at education is they're basically saying, we're going to modify the statute to make sure we can get some more debt forgiven. And James Caval, the undersecretary to, to Cardona, says, we're trying to grant those credits. We have ongoing rulemaking. They'll take a look and see what statutes would qualify. So that's basically what they're doing on that front. Now let's turn over to the situation that's happening tonight on that six stimulus. You know, six stimulus is very important. What is six stimulus? It's the Western allies. The Western allies, everything from Germany, France, United States, uh, England, they all have to help each other battle these recessionary pressures some of which caused by Vladimir Putin, together as a team, 
otherwise, what happens? If one of the countries goes to recession, we all go to recession. So where's the latest update tonight? The latest update tonight is that we sometimes see things going on good and then stalls up again. We had the European Union saying earlier this week that it was going to give a clearance or what we call an exemption to two countries, including Hungary, that couldn't get off of that Russian oil so that they could all the rest of the countries do a ban on Russian oil. Good. But what are the rest of the countries doing tonight for the recessionary pressures? Not much. And we had really horrible news about 16 months this week on the economic front, not the legislative front. It came in from England. England's Bank of England said, you know what? We're just very worried about potential recession. But we do know that our economy is shrinking dramatically. Let's go over the details of what the Bank of England said on Thursday, Cinco de Mayo. The British pound that day, the British pound sterling, dropped the single's biggest day since the start of the pandemic. And then the trading was the lowest level since July of 2020. We are walking into a narrow path right now, says the Bank of England's governor, Andrew Bailey. He says the proximate reason for raising rates, interest rates, at this point is not only the current profile of inflation, but what is expected to come. And he believes that inflation in England is going to 10%. Ouch. Do you think anyone in inflation, anyone in England can afford 10%? Of course not. We can't afford 10%. They cannot afford 10% inflation. We're at 8% tonight. And that comes as we're witnessing a clear depreciation of the sterling and shrinkage of its economy. The policymakers of the Bank of England warned that their GDP growth is about to slow sharply and dramatically while inflation gets hotter. What is this? It's stagflation. Stagflation is when you have inflation and recession at the same time. Yeah, and that's what Jay Powell's giving you. Jay Powell's bringing on a recession because he's raising those interest rates and he's likely not to solve inflation. He's likely to keep it going because he has no tools to fix inflation when it's caused by supply chain disruption. Stagflation happened in England. If they have stagflation, we will have stagflation. Then we have all this confusion about this $564 million payment in euro bonds of the Russian debt. Russian debt has yet to happen. But a series of new funds cleared, I believe it was on April 29th, in Citibank London from Vladimir Putin to ensure that his Russian debt did not default. But what I'm worried about is the following, is that oil prices are about to get really much worse. This is six stimulus. The International Monetary Fund showed volatile trading just a few days ago. Weakening growth and inflationary pressures can only mean one thing. A stagflation is coming, said PM analyst Stephen Greenock that day. But what's going on? In China, they're not driving their cars. They're on lockdown because of Omicron. And they're not driving their cars. Well, they're the second largest, one of the biggest, largest consumers of gasoline. They're not consuming it. Remember how this works. If they're not consuming the gasoline, then there's less shortage of it. So why am I telling you this? Well, China will come off of lockdown in about 30, 60 days. And when China comes off lockdown, they start to consume more gasoline again. When they consume more gasoline, there'll be more shortage of gasoline. And tonight, gasoline is still very high, too high, unsustainably high. 108, 109, 106, a barrel Brent crude over the last two weeks that's before China comes out of lockdown. Price of gasoline at the pump in the United States, 413 to 424. I told you back in March, unsustainable into May. Hey, we are already in the first week of May and it's actually getting worse. Tonight I'm reporting to you that you need to get ready because we're going to go to 420, 430, 440 a barrel at ga a gallon. And we're going to go to 120 a barrel if China comes off a of lockdown very abruptly when we're in the middle of this big supply chain. Uh, shortage of oil because of Putin. That is the oil pressures of six stimulus. Then we have the wheat pressures. Wheat is still one of those commodities that no one's talking except me, you, and a few other analysts. And that shortage of wheat is going to get worse. That wheat shortage will draw us all into recession because no one can afford an out-of-touch price loaf of bread. The details tonight are that the economic data is bad. The recessionary pressures are there. The storm is on the horizon. 
But as a family, you and I, we're prepared together across the board. Let me tell you why I'm so happy for you. I come in with tough love. I come in with nurturing love. And when I come in with tough love, I say, hey, there's a storm out in that sea. And that storm is the recession of 2023 coming for two years. I've been making that statement on this channel for three months. And while I make the statement to you and you hear the statement, many other people may not hear the statement. And they may think the economy is perfect. Until they see this week. This week was a wide eye opening for millions of Americans who thought everything was perfect in this economy. They saw their stocks plummet. Stocks are now trading for many people for their lowest levels for over a year and a half. I Meaning if they bought the stock this year, they're losing money. If they bought the stock last year, they may be down. Bonds are now surging out of control, you know, up to three percentage basis point. If you have a flexible mortgage, if you have credit card debt, you see the numbers going up very quickly. You wonder what just happened. And now you start to see that something bad is happening. That's the wake-up call that this week gave. What's going to come next? What's going to come next is fall 2022. It's going to be very bad. You're going to basically see the storm out at sea. You're going to be on the, on the beach and you look out. You see, I see that coming. I see third quarter of this year, the tail end of this year, looking to be very, very dire. And then I see the start of next year, the storm has landed. And that is why I'm here and that's why you're here. Because what we do together is we cash every check. We cash every single check and we keep it in the bank account and we save it. We don't sit around and wait for something to happen because by then, the storm is already on landfall. You don't want to wait for the storm to come on landfall. You want to cash every check that's available today and keep it in the bank. And that is why that comment that I always go back to is so important that also came in this week. That incredible comment came in from one of the most important guys for economic analysis. He's a billionaire because he has been able to predict the market correctly for a very long time. And what is his name? His name is Paul Tudor Jones, and he says that this is uncharted territory. He says that this is the worst economic environment that we have been in now for financial assets that he can remember. It's a very difficult period in which you must simply involve capital preservation. It means saving your money. He says that virtually everything may be down. And I think it's one of the difficult periods in which you're going to have difficulty making money. We got inflation on the one hand. We got stalling growth on the other side. And when a guy who made much of his money decades ago during some of the most volatile times of uh, the last 30 years says this is uncharted territory, let me tell you what that means. It means that the kid that's 23 years old that's making a YouTube channel and telling you to buy Doge is going to go to a dollar has never seen what the uncharted territory is tonight. It means that the financial analyst that works in a major U.S. bank who's on a broadcast channel who's about 26 years old with no MBA and says, you know what, I like some stocks and I really like, I think they're undervalued, buy on the dip. They haven't seen this uncharted territory. They haven't experienced it before. They don't know what they're talking about. When you see that there is an environment in which no one has experienced before, and you see it's a recession that very few people who are under the age of 30 may have ever seen before or even have, have any vestige of anything in their families or immediate families, it's something that you have to have someone who has experienced it show you. If you're in Europe during the last recession, you saw it. If you're in the United States and you saw the last recession, you saw it. If you had a business in the last recession, if you had a job in the last recession, you saw how bad it is. Tonight, it's going to potentially also have inflation on top of that. That's stagflation. It's not just recession. It's recession plus inflation. It's stagflation. And that's why the good news is that there's four stimulus checks available. The great news is I found the checks for you. The great news is I delivered the news to you to get those checks right across the board. The great news is that the checks are live in every U.S. state. There is a four stimulus check live in every U.S. state. This is the recording of May 2022. Who knows what the recording will be by November? There may not be a four stimulus check in every U.S. state by November. They may be used up. But you found this channel in the nick of time. You found this channel when there's checks available. 
you found this channel when those checks are available for you to be gotten, and you found this channel when those checks are big amounts of money. Big, big amounts of money for all of you. For all of you, go get those four stimulus checks. You got your homework assignment. It's for Monday. Become a member. Go to the top of the chat and pin comment. Become a Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Castino VIP. Then get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday. And then finally, do your homework assignment. You know what it is. By Monday, I want you to get your second application on file. If you just found this channel, then welcome. I want you to get your first application on file. If it's a weekend, I know that phone numbers may not be answering. So some of the nonprofits may not answer the phone on the weekends. City and counties, of course, are closed on the weekends and states are closed. But if it's an online website, you can apply on the weekend. Web, the internet is never asleep. Sort of like uh, Mitch. He just never goes to bed. <laughs> he hasn't been asleep uh, since the 1920s. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's why he looks like that. Uh, and, and with that, it's so important to get these incredible checks because the force of check is in every USA tonight. I want you to get those checks. Next week, who knows what's going to happen? But my projection is, I think, that the calamities of this week that woke up so many people has now really come home to roost. And now they realize there's something wrong going on out there. They're going to stand at the edge of the beach, and they're going to look out and they say, there it is. There is a storm coming on. And they're going to be prepared across the board. The people who stand on the beach say, it's just a dip. Buy 20,000 more of Doge. They're going to get flooded. <laughs> the people who say, uh, you know, this is just a dip for Ar Under Armour. It's just a cheap stock. Go buy it. The people who say, you know, uh, Kathy Wood, I'm in here for five years. Just buy everything and then continue to have it go down 25% every 10 seconds. I'm in here for five years. I think that's just not going to work. Uh, and with that, God bless you all. Happy Mother's Day. This Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, actually, every day is Mother's Day. Every, every day is Mother's Day. I mean, Father's Day is just, you know, once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, and, and, and when is Kids Day? I you never notice there's no Kids Day. Why is there no Sons Day and no Daughters Day? <laughs> Why is there no Pets Day? Why is there no Talking Cows Day? But, you know, we try our best. <laughs> there's a Mother's Day. There's a Father's Day. I think there should be a Mother's Day every single day of the, week, of the year. Do you agree? Uh, if you do, then jump in the live chat. Happy Mother's Day to all my mothers in the live chat. Happy Mother's Day to everyone that um, is with us or has left us. And happy Mother's Day for everyone who is a newly expected mother as well. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, to my home, to your home, happy Mother's Day. Get those big checks. Become a member. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful weekend. I will be back with you all weekend long with new shows. Tonight, we have evenings early at 5 o'clock. We have evenings countdown at 6 we have evenings extra stream stimulus at seven, evenings extra at eight, sunset at nine. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with Ally Tomorrow.